so now we'll see the another drug that is called verapamil it is also coming under calcium channel blocker but it is coming under phenyl alkyl amines this is phenyl this is alkyl amine so phenyl alkyl amine so what is the class it is coming under it is coming under phenyl phenyl alkyl amine type calcium channel blocker now we'll see the structure of verapamil okay so this one so this would be taken as the parent okay before that we have already we have known pentanoic acid structure so what is pentanoic acid five carbon acid that is called pentanoic acid that is otherwise called valeric acid so what is pentanoic acid five carbon acid can be called pentanoic acid and it is otherwise called valeric acid and instead of carboxylic acid here we have cyanide i mean that nitrile no that can be called valeronitrile so what is that here we have chosen valeronitrile as the parent so with that what are all attached in the second portion we have dimethoxyphenyl group and also same in second portion we have isopropyl in fifth portion we have methyl amino group and that is connected with ethyl again dimethoxyphenyl so we can name that so what is the parent taken here that is called valeronitrile so with the valeronitrile in fifth portion what is attached methyl amino ethyl and this one so five open bracket and second carbon of ethyl is connected with that that's why two in that three four dimethoxyphenyl ethyl then methyl amino okay then in second portion what is attached three four dimethoxyphenyl and again in second portion we have isopropyl then what is left valeronitrile so what are all attached valeronitrile we have and in second portion we have dimethoxyphenyl group and also isopropyl group and in fifth portion we have methyl amino group that is connected with ethyl and second carbon of ethyl is connected with 3,4 dimethoxyphenyl that is called verapamil which type it is it is coming under phenyl alkyl amine type calcium channel blocker okay now next one is diltiazem that is coming under benzothiazepine class of calcium channel blocker Uh, uh, what is meant by what is meant by acepin before that five membered nitrogen five membered heterocyclic ring having only one nitrogen that can be called as pyrrole if that would be six membered means that is called pyridine and that would be seven membered means that is called acepin so what is acepin seven membered heterocyclic ring having only one heteroatom that is nitrogen means that is called acepin okay with the acepin i mean introduction of one more one more heteroatom that is sulfur means that is called thai acepin so this is called thai acepin if the thai acepin nucleus is fused with benzene means that can be called ben benzo thai acepin we have to tell the number of i mean position of the heteroatoms here according to priority order what is the priority order o s n so here i mean in these two sulfur and nitrogen sulfur is getting higher priority that's why this is considered as one one two three four five so first portion we have sulfur and fifth portion we have nitrogen that's why it is called 15 benzo thai acepin so this would be the structure of 15 benzo thai acepin okay now here if the double bond would be taken here and instead of that here we are putting ketone in fourth portion and to satisfy the valency of nitrogen we are putting hydrogen here so this is called 15 benzo thai acepin here we have hydrogen in fifth portion that's why 5h four own so what is that this is called 15 benzo thiazepin 5h four own so compare this one with the parent present here so this would be the basic nucleus for diltiazem so what is that compare this one with this one here the bond between 2 and 3 no that is left here so already i said for a bond we have to add two hydrogens okay so it is dihydro where the bond is between between 2 and 3 that's why it is called 2 3 dihydro 15 benzo thiazepin 5h 4 own so that is the basic ring present here so with that what are all attached third portion acetyl oxy that is acetoxy group and in second portion we have 4 methoxy 4 methoxy phenyl and in fifth portion we have what are all we have ethyl and the, with the ethyl what is it as dimethyl amino group so dimethyl amino ethyl at fifth portion so what is the parent here that is called 2 3 dihydro 15 benzo thiazepin 5h 4 own okay so we can tell the chemical name so 3 acetoxy 3 acetoxy 5 second carbon will be connected with the, this one that's why 2 dimethyl amino ethyl then 2 3 dihydro 2 4 methoxy phenyl then this one that is 1 5 benzo thiazepin 5h 4 own so that is for diltiazem now we'll see the next drug that is called bepridil this is also coming under 
calcium channel blocker. So look at the structure of bipedal. So this one. Already we have known this is called pyrrolidin. Why it is called pyrrolidin? Five member ring having one nitrogen that can be called pyrrol. If one bond is left, that can be called pyrrolin. That is ending with lin. If it is not having any bond means that is called pyrrolidin. So this is pyrrolidin. With the pyrrolidin, what is attached? Ethyl amino group is attached. So that would be considered as a parent. Okay. We can choose anything as a parent. Here I have chosen this as a parent. That is pyrrolidin ethyl amine. So with the nitrogen, what is attached? Phenyl ring is attached, and this is benzyl or phenyl methyl. Benzyl or phenyl methyl is attached. Here, this is called propoxy group. So, with the propoxy, second carbon is connected with methyl. So, that's why it is 2 methyl propoxy. Propoxy methyl. So, what is attached? Now, we can tell the chemical name. So, already I said this is called propoxy. So, what is that? 2 methyl propoxy methyl. So, 2 methyl, this is propoxy methyl. Then, N phenyl N benzyl or N instead of writing methyl uh, phenyl methyl we can write benzyl benzyl pyrrolidin ethyl amine that is one name otherwise we can write like this okay so what is that here I have chosen aniline as the parent so uh, phenyl ring with NH2 can be called as aniline with the aniline what are all attached with the nitrogen here benzyl is attached and here what is attached this is called propyl group is attached and in the second carbon of propyl is connected with pyrrolidin and third carbon is connected with isobutoxy that is four carbon means that is called butane and second is having two methyl means that is uh, that should get iso as the prefix so that's why isobutoxy so we can tell the chemical name so everything is attached with the nitrogen of aniline that's why n benzyl again n in that n so what is that uh, here propyl is attached and the third carbon is connected with isobutoxy isobutoxy and second with i mean two pyrrolidin and in that pyrrolidin first portion would be attached that's why one yl phenyl sorry propyl aniline so once again i will tell that so here aniline has chosen as the parent here so with the aniline what is attached with the nitrogen we have uh, benzyl group and here we have what is attached propyl group the second propyl is attached with the pyrrolidin and third one be, would be attached with the isobutoxy group that's why n open bracket that is n benzyl again n open bracket 3 isobutoxy 2 pyrrolidin 1 yl propyl aniline okay now, so already we have known what is bepredil it is also coming under calcium channel blocker but it is a second generation alkylamine type calcium channel blocker in addition to being a calcium channel blocker it inhibits sodium flow into the heart tissue and lengthens cardiac repolarization and causing bradycardia okay so it is not given in patients i mean the main caution is it should not be given in patients having hypokalemia so it is used only in the treatment of stable angina now we'll see the next drug that is called dipyridamol so look at the structure of dipyridamol so we have known this ring this ring is called as pyrimidin so this is also pyrimidin fusion of two pyrimidins that's why it is called pyrimido pyrimidin now uh, look at the numbering numbering starts from here one, only for pyrimidin means this is 1 2 3 4 5 this would be 4 and this is 5 so for this means 1 2 3 4 5 so this would be 5 for according to this ring this is 5 this is 4 so according to this ring this would be 4 this is 5 that's why it is called pyrimido 5 4 d pyrimidine so what is the ring present here that is called pyrimido pyrimidine in between that we have to write 5 4 so this is according to that this would be 5 4 5 4 d pyrimidine so with that what is attached at fourth and eighth portions we have here we have piperidine so here we are having two piperidine groups at fourth and eighth portions and in second and sixth what we are having this is ethanol ethanol group so diethanol amino groups present in second and sixth portion so what is the chemical name so two six two times that's why bis diethanol amino and 48 piperidinyl or 48 piperidin 1 yl then pyrimido 54 d pyrimidin so that is the chemical name already we have seen it is coming under anti thrombotic agent so it inhibits the enzyme called the adenosine deaminase erythrocytes and interferes with the uptake of adenosine by the erythrocytes because of that the effect of prostacycline would be potentiated and this prostacyclinum that is acting as an inhibitor of 
platelet aggregation. Now we will see the metabolism of diltiazem and verapamil. So you all have known the structure of diltiazem. First it undergoes deacetylation followed by O demethylation and N demethylation. Deacetylation, deacetylation means removal of acetyl group. So here we have acetyl that would be removed. So instead of that here we have only H. So what is the name we are getting? Desacetyl diltiazem. So what is the first step? It undergoes deacetylation. Only the acetyl group would be removed and we are getting deacetyl diltiazem. Then it undergoes O demethylation. So methyl attached with the oxygen. O no that is removed. So we got O demethyl desacetyl diltiazem and it also undergoes N demethylation with the N two methyl groups would be attached in that one methyl would be removed. So we got N desmethyl then desacetyl diltiazem. So two products we are getting. So what about the metabolism of diltiazem? First it undergoes deacetylation followed by O demethylation and N demethylation. Now we will see for Verapamil, you have known the structure for verapamil. So here, it first it undergoes N dealkylation. So here, um, with the nitrogen, what is attached? Which alkyl alkyl group would be attached? That is methyl. So that would be removed. So instead of that, here we have only H. So we are getting the product nor verapamil. Already we have known the meaning for nor. So what is nor? Nor means absence of methyl group. So with the verapamil, methyl is absent. That's why it is called nor verapamil. So this is the important metabolite. So first it undergoes N dealkylation, we are getting nor verapamil. Then it undergoes O demethylation. Here we have four methyl groups connected with connected with oxygen. So that are all removed, and we are getting O desmethyl nor verapamil. That's all. Now we will see some important actions of verapamil and diltiazem. So this verapamil no, it has the maximum depres depressant action on the heart that is why that is it is um, it is having maximum cardio depressant activity and it also cause vasodilatation. Now we will see the what all now we will see the indications for verapamil first already I said it is a uh, it is having cardio depressant action that is why it is used for the treatment of angina and it is also used for hypertropic obstructive cardiomyopathy or hypertropic cardiomyopathy. In these cases, the cardiac activity should be reduced. If this cardiac activity would be increased, the chances of obstruction increases. That is why the cardiac activity should be reduced. Already we have known verapamil is having um, cardio depressant activity. That is why it is used for the treatment of hypertropic obstructive cardiomyopathy and it is also used for the prophylaxis of migraine and also in the treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Now we will see about diltiazem. It is also having cardiac depressant activity by while comparing with verapamil and diltiazem, it is having lesser cardiac depressant activity than verapamil. So same uses used in the treatment of angina, hypertropic obstructive cardiomyopathy and paroxysmal supraventricular, tachy um, supraventricular tachycardia and it is also used for the treatment of hypertension with elderly patients. In elderly patients there will be arteriosclerosis that is thickening of blood vessels. This calcium channel blockers will cause relaxation of smooth muscle in tunica media, relaxation of smooth muscle in tunica media and there will be vasodilatation and they are acting as antihypertensives. It is also used in low renin hypertension that in the treatment of low renin hypertension that is it is associated with high aldosterone levels in Kohn syndrome and low aldosterone levels in Liddell syndrome. Then it is used in the treatment of asthma with hypertension. So in, the, in this case if you use beta blockers they will cause bronchoconstriction. They will, uh, they will further precipitate the asthma. So if the calcium channel blockers are used they are not having any effect on bronchus. So they can be given safely in patients with asthma with hypertension. It is also used in the treatment of migraine with hypertension. Then it is used in the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. Already we have known it is a blood circulation disorder. It causes the blood vessels outside the heart and brain to narrow, block or spasm. That is they can cause blockade in arteries and veins. The calcium channel blockers that cause vasodilatation. Uh, so they can be used for the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. And finally used in the treatment of 
isolated systolic hypertension. Now we will see the contraindications for this varapamelan diltiasm. So it is used in conditions having decreased conductivity of heart mainly in the case of sick sinus syndrome. What is that? There is an abnormality in conduction pathway and also in congestive heart failure and it should not be combined in patients with beta blockers. Up to that we have completed varapamelan diltiasm.